and singing our opening hymn, number 595, from the Catholic Book of Worship 3, Christians, Let Us Love One Another, number 595. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life. God is love. We who break this bread are no body. We who share this cup are all one. Children of our Father in heaven, we are as with God's only Son. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life, God is love. Jesus is our life, God is love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Great to see you, everybody. Uh, sure, beautiful morning out there, eh? We were thinking of having mass in the parking lot today. It was so nice, but uh, decided to stay in, indoors instead. Um, well, today is a very special day. First of all, it is Barbecue Sunday. So uh, Catholic Women's League has asked me once again to uh, encourage you, if, you're, if you haven't already done so, and you're like to have something special for supper tonight to uh, phone the number on the uh, poster at the back of the church and reserve your meal for the barbecue takeout, takeout dinner uh, picked up at Hanley Hall later this afternoon. And uh, today it's Vintage Car Sunday in town, <laughs> driving from uh, Lombardi, there are all these vintage cars heading for the Lombardy Fairground. But most importantly, today is the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. It is a day for us to give special consideration to th this ritual that we do so often, that is so important, that has left, that, that has shaped our understanding of ourselves and our world and our church, uh, the Eucharist is, uh, is really important. And, uh, and you know that. That's because that's why you're here. And uh, so um, as we gather uh, today, and uh, also I should have mentioned today, as you may have noticed uh, if you got to Mass early this morning, the CWL, new executive is being installed as well. So anyways, all of these things are unfolding in our liturgy today. It's going to be quite a three-ring circus here at the Mass. <laughs> so uh, let us acknowledge that uh, we stand in need of God's healing grace in our lives. Let us pray that God will look on us, smile on us with love, as God always does. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people. Jesus Christ. 
today's Father's Day. Forgot to mention that. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, after Abram's return, King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one-tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter rule in the midst of your foes. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you led your forces on the holy mountains from the womb of the morning like dew your youth will come to you you are a priest forever according to the order of melchizedek The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close and the twelve came to him and said, send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place. But Jesus said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. And Jesus said to the disciples, Make the people sit down in groups of about 50 each. So they did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So did I mention the barbecue? I guess I did, eh? Okay. So folks, um, the Eucharist is a multidimensional uh, reality in our lives. And um, just uh, while we, we can't go into great detail about uh, the Eucharist, uh, as much as it warrants and as much as I would like. Um, just a couple of little reference points before we do the installation of the, uh, of the Catholic Women's League executive in our parish. Um, first of all, I, um, you know, I, I was speaking recently to uh, 
a, a, a woman who is the coordinator of pastoral services in one of the uh, penitentiaries in Kingston, uh, Collins Bay, actually. And, and uh, she has had the job for about six months. She used to work at the Chancery, and now she's, she's working there. And uh, so I was asking her about her position, and she said, you know, it's very interesting. She said, I'm a Catholic, but she said, I'm not the Catholic chaplain. Actually, Father Amato is the Catholic chaplain there at Collins Bay. But uh, she said that uh, my job is to coordinate things, to coordinate um, gatherings uh, for different religious denominations within the institution, not always Christian, you know. So, and she said, the one thing that ha has really impressed me as I help to organize these gatherings of the different religious groups and make sure people have their passes to get into the prison and out of the prison and all that, is how rich our tradition is, how rich the Catholic tradition is, how rich our liturgies are, the depth of meaning, she said, has really struck me, especially, she said, and this is not to denigrate other religions, but she said, especially in comparison with some of the other rituals that I'm in charge of organizing for different religious groups, she said, you know, I'm really grateful for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the tradition, the liturgical tradition that we have as Catholics. And, um, you know, it, it does impact us. You, you may not realize it, but uh, and I, it, it probably comes from the Jewish people. You know, our roots are very deeply, uh, firmly grounded in, in the Jewish tradition. Christian faith grew out of the Jewish faith. And the Catholic faith in particular uh, has, uh, bears a striking resemblance in many ways to the Jewish faith. And, um, it, and it, it imprints us, whether we realize it or not, our way of understanding the world is, uh, is influenced by especially the Mass. The Mass is such a, uh, a fundamental part of our lives. Um, now, you know who Bruce Springsteen is, right? Bruce Springsteen. I was reading this article about Bruce Springsteen, and the, uh, the author of the article was pointing out how if you look at Bruce Strings Springsteen's works, his lyrics, his words, they're all about themes that are really Eucharistic, about community, about healing, about renewal of communities, about hope, about broken relationships being healed. He said, this is all, and Springsteen is a Catholic. He says, hey, I'm not the best Catholic, but I'm still hanging in there, he said. And um, uh, he said, it, you can see how the Eucharistic liturgy, the Mass, has imprinted his approach to life. And it does that, I think, for all of us. Um, I think it does that for all of us. And it does so, it's obvious in, a, in the parish outside of our, um, uh, outside of the Mass itself. For instance, you know, we, in normal times, when COVID wasn't, wasn't around, we would have Meals. Meals are big here in our parish. And meals are big. The Eucharist is, is a meal. It's more than a meal, of course. It's an atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's a meal. It's a place of union with God, with one another. And it's a commissioning. So I, uh, I got an email a couple of weeks ago um, from a cousin of mine saying that his brother and his wife, Bill and Lindsay, uh, were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And I couldn't believe it, 50 years. I was at that wedding. Uh, I was a young guy. I couldn't believe that 50 years had gone by. But this wedding was, it was, it was a very nice wedding. And it was celebrated in the chapel of Loyola University in Montreal. And uh, there was a mass. And at communion time, um, the priest distributed the body of Christ. But the bride and groom, Bill and Lindsay, um, were ministers of the cup. 
Now, it was 1972, drinking from the cup. That was like out there, man. Vatican II, drinking from the cup. You had to get special permission from the bishop. And they not only, not only could we drink from the cup, but Bill and Lindsay were the ministers of the cup. And uh, when I was writing to them on their anniversary, I said, Bill and Lindsay, I remember so well your wedding, and I remember that you were the ministers of the blood of Christ, the, the Eucharist. And I said, how appropriate, because the 50 years that you've been married, you have fed us both in body and in soul all those years. You've been a great witness to the Eucharist that you were ministering, that you were providing for us at, that, at your wedding mass. So uh, I think it's in that spirit that uh, we should all consider ourselves to be walking Eucharists. And when people serve in the parish, this is a reflection of the fact that they have heard or are conscious of their responsibility to be that giving presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And so that, it's in that spirit that we uh, invite the executive of the CWL to come forward for their installation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Blessed are you, loving God. You have made a covenant with your people. You called us to be your holy people, to sing your praises as at all, to sing your praises at all times. Bless us in our work and prayer for God in Canada and bless the officers we have chosen to lead us in the Catholic Women's League. We give you praise through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy Clark, past president. Dear people of God, through baptism, we are called to work together as members of the body of Christ. Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to bestow upon us gifts of many kinds to complete God's work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. The Catholic Women's League of Canada is a national organization rooted in gospel values, calling its members to holiness through service to the people of God. As a League member, each woman uses her gifts and talents to share the good news of her Christian calling, to love and serve God and neighbor in her parish, diocese, province, and country. These women are your elected officers of the Kingston Diocesan Council of the Catholic Women's League of Canada. In your presence and with your prayers, we now install them in their respective offices for the coming year. Ladies, please come forward when your name is called. President Dorothy Catrochi. Recording Secretary and Communications, Carrie Lynn Gahan. Treasurer, Linda Collier. Spiritual Development, Linda Babcock. Christian Family Life and Community Life, Eleanor Hamlin. Education and Health, Jeanine Herbert. Past President Historian, Ann Johnson. Dorothy, as past president, 
It is my privilege to present, to you, present you with this gavel as a sign of your office as president. Will you be faithful to your call and help all League members through your faith, love, and prayers? I will. As retiring past president, it is my privilege to install you as the new executive officers of the Kingston Diocese Council. You have been chosen by the members of the Catholic Women's League of Canada because they recognize in you the gifts of service to the League at the parish level. We thank you for your willingness to accept your office. Will you continue to be faithful to call and help all League members through your faith, love, and prayers? Everyone? I will with God's help. For the glory of God and the good of God's people, do you promise, as a Catholic woman of honor, to invoke and imitate our patroness, Our Lady of Good Counsel? I will, with God's help. Do you promise to be a loyal member of the Catholic Women's League of Canada and to promote its interests and growth in every way? I will, with God's help. Do you promise to cooperate with officers in all programs under their direction and to conform to the best of your ability to the bylaws of the organization in all League activities. I will, with God's help. May God keep you faithful to these promises and bring them to fulfillment. Members of the League, at this time I reaffirm my commitment to assist the executive and members of the League in their work for God and Canada. Bring Christ's light to the world. Bring Christ's light into the world. Bring Christ's light. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of the universe and healer of a broken world. Look with kindness on these women. They have chosen to serve as officers of St. Francis de Sales, Blessed Sacrament Parish, Council Executive of the Catholic Women's League of Canada. In your love and mercy, bless all their works. May your glory be manifested in all they do for you and for your church. All praise and glory to you, God, through Jesus Christ, in the love of your Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, these women have been chosen to serve the church through the St. Francis de Sales Blessed Sacrament Parish Council 
of the Catholic Women's League of Canada. I ask you to welcome their gift of themselves, their faith and trust in God, and their love for the Church, the League, and Canada. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Kathy. I invite you to stand now as we renew our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God nourishes his people by the word of Christ and the bread of life. And so let us pray with one voice for the building up of the body of Christ and proclaim and the proclamation of the good news to every land and the salvation of all people. For the church, the one body of Christ, united in this banquet of praise and thanksgiving, for holy priests, to nourish God's people with the Eucharist and sound teaching. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctification of all priests in this archdiocese and throughout the world, for all the baptized to feed the hungry of the world with the bread of justice and loving deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminarians and more vocations to the diaconate, priesthood, and religious life. For students facing exams or searching for employment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations in the pursuit of peace, for all agencies who seek to address the plight of starvation, especially among children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the body and spirit that flows from the Eucharist for those bound by illness, pain, or despair, for all who have died in Christ, in memory of Patrick Maher, and for eternal life for all those who ate the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. God of love, giver of every good gift, hear our prayers as you gather your people at this banquet of life and renewal, and grant that our lives may be transformed by this Eucharistic celebration. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing hymn number 604 from the Catholic Book of Worship, Three Seeds Scattered and Sown, number 604. Oh. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, reestablishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Oh, 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 oh,
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer a sign of the peace of Christ to one another.
who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 605, from the Catholic Book of Worship 3, I Am the Bread of Life, number 605.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. So dads, this blessing is for you. I'm sorry, I don't have a bud. I could say this bud's for you, but no. This blessing's for you. So after each invocation, a rousing amen, everybody. Amen. The Lord be with you to protect you. Amen. amen. May he guide you and give you strength. Amen. May he watch over you, keep you in his care, and bless you with his peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 426 from the Catholic Book Worship 3, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 426.